Like the Vision. Good afternoon and welcome to Behind the Rhyme. I'm Pat Middleton, and today we will continue our journey through It Is Written, Poem and Testimonies Inspired by the Holy Bible and written by yours truly. Today's poem is entitled, I Will Sing. And the verses that have inspired this poem, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. For lo, winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, and the time of singing of the birds is come. I will sing. Changing the format just a little going forward with this program, I will share the poem, then I will share the testimony behind it, and then I will end by sharing the poem one last time. I will sing. Early one morning, before the sun began to rise, the clouds opened up in heaven and rain poured down from the skies. Thunder smacked, cracked, and poppled. So loud, it shook me awake. I opened my eyes just in time to see lightning strike across time and space. As I lay in my bed in the darkness, listening to this summer storm, I tried my best to forget that I was going through a storm of my own. In the distance, behind all the thunder, in the midst of the storm and the rain, I heard a sound that made me smile. Birds were chirping their songs of praise. Though the rain beat down upon them, though lightning flashed across their skies, though the sound of thunder was deafening, it didn't stop me from hearing their cries. Sweet sounding cries of birds singing with songs to their creator and king. A lesson that even though it's raining in my life, my soul should continue to sing. For my creator is still deserving to hear my own song of praise. It's the reason he created me. It's the reason he woke me up that day. I will sing. So, um, self-explanatory poem, not much, uh, to dig into with this particular testimony, uh, I actually placed the testimony within the lines of the poem. So we really don't have to go too far behind the rhyme. Sometimes um, this is just how the Lord will give me a poem. It's exactly what's going on in my life and that becomes uh, a poem. Sometimes it's a metaphor or simile that... Uh, I've drawn from something else. But with this particular poem, Going Behind the Rhyme, it is, the, it, it is exactly what it appears to be. I was waking up, and this is what I woke up to, this storm, this massive storm. And I always, um, you know, we may rearrange our bedrooms, uh, and some people rearrange their furniture at least once or twice a year. My grandmother used to do that. But I always place my bed under the window because I, and I have a chair that looks out the window, but the headboard in this particular room, this was years ago, um, my my headboard was right under the window. So I could actually look up at the sky as I'm going to sleep and waking up in the morning. And um, so literally the storm woke me up. Well, God woke me up. And I found myself, before I could even realize I was awake, hearing this massive thunderstorm, opening my eyes and seeing, you know, the clouds and uh, dark, you know, in the morning and the lightning and thunder. It was a massive storm. A summer storm. And just as the third verse says, as I lay there just watching the skies, because I love to watch the thunder 
uh, I love to watch the lightning. I'm not too fond of the loud booms of thunder, but lightning is fascinating. It's beautiful. And so I often, when this happens, will just lay there and look up at the lightning and just marvel at the wonder of God. But that particular morning, I heard birds singing and I was like, oh my goodness, I can hear the birds behind all that rain and all that thunder. Wow. And, you know, pondering that and then um, remembering, you know, how beautiful that is that there, that God's creation is praising him in the midst of such chaos in the skies. Um, it was a lesson to me. It literally was a lesson to me. A lot of times because of my I have a chronic illness that sometimes I wake up in pain. And before I even realize I'm awake, I feel the pain before I even open my eyes. Um, I can't remember exactly what particular storm other than chronic illness was going on in my life. But it was enough to remind me that if these birds could sing praises to the Lord in the midst of that kind of storm then my storms, my life, you know, storms that I go through, the cares of this life and tests and trials and tribulations and temptations should not prevent me from praising God. Because no matter what's going on, he is worthy of our praise. We were created to praise him. We were created to praise him. And there's no, as long as everything's going great. No, it stops there. We were created to praise him. He's worthy of praise. There's an old song that goes, if he never does another thing, he's already done everything he said he would do. There's a song my mother used to sing. God has done so much for me. He's opened doors I could not see. He satisfies and his word is true. He's already done everything. He said he would do. He saved me. He raised me. He keeps me. He blesses me. So he's already done what he said he would do. He died on Calvary for my salvation. There's so many things that show us that he's worthy of our praise regardless of our life circumstances. And the phrase sacrifice of praise, sometimes we really don't get what that means. A sacrifice is something that you give in spite of. You sacrifice giving when your money may be low. You sacrifice serving when your body may be racked with pain. You sacrifice loving when you may not be treated the same in return. And you sacrifice praise even when that's the last thing you in your flesh and you in your humanity want to do or even feel like doing. But you sacrifice praise. The sacrifice of praise is praising God in the midst of a storm, not waiting for the storm to be over. But uh, there's another song, Walter Hawkins and the Love Fellowship Choir. Don't wait until the battle is over Shout now. Don't wait until the sickness has been healed. Praise now. Offer a sacrifice of praise now. Don't wait until the job comes through and you hear back, yes, you've been hired. Offer a sacrifice of praise before. Uh, I'll never forget one of the, uh, one, another testimony of mine that um, it's a different poem but I'll share it now, then I'll share it again later because, hey, testimonies we overcome by the word of our testimony. And sometimes we get even that scripture, Revelations 12, 11. A, we, we overcome him being the enemy in that scripture by two things, the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And a lot of times we, especially back in the days of testimony service, we don't hear too much of that anymore with praise and worship having taken over that platform or that format. But we would often say, you know, share your testimony because you can help somebody else overcome. Because, you know, we overcome by the word of our testimony. But we really don't realize we're 
we're making the wrong application. Not that it's not true that if you hear someone else's testimony, it could help you overcome. But what John wrote in Revelation, when he said, we, and we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Our testimony, when we share our testimony, we overcome him, the enemy. Because he wants to stop our mouth. He wants to shut our mouth from offering God praise. Every time we share a testimony, we are overcoming the enemy. That's what that scripture means. That's the way that God gave me the understanding for that scripture. I'll put it that way. Uh, However, there was a test many years ago. I found a lump in my breast and I had to go and, and take this test, the mammogram. And between the time that the lump was discovered and the time that I made the appointment and then the time that I showed up for the appointment, something was happening internally with me, fear, uh, worrying about the future, worrying about my children, my family, me. Is it cancer? Would I have to go through surgery? I'm worrying, but something happened by the time the I, I made the appointment, that space of time, something began to happen in me to say, okay, you know what? If this is really cancer, if this is going to take me out, then I'm blessed. I'm so, What a blessed life I've had. God saved me. My children are in the church. My family is doing well. Praise God, I'm ready. And I began to praise him before the mammogram was taken. While I waited for the results, I was giving God a sacrifice of praise. Yes, there was still fear there. Yes, there was still worry there. But there was also praise there. Just like from the last poem we shared, there will be praise. And so we offer sacrifices of praise because we know who we're praising. He loves us and he's worthy of our praise. Certainly in Psalms and in other scriptures as well, there's so many passages that talk about singing, which is the title of the poem. I will sing. Moses in Exodus 15 and 1, the scripture says, Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. Quote, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Exodus, continuing, verse 2. The Lord is my strong defender. He is the one who saved me. He is my God, and I will praise him. I will sing about his greatness. Judges 5 and 3. Hear, O kings. Listen, O rulers. I will sing to the Lord. I will sing praises to the God of Israel. Samuel twenty two fifty. For this I will give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing praises to your name. And it goes on and on and on. From my soul I will sing songs of thanksgiving, I will sing and proclaim your wonder and mystery. Psalms 27, 6, and now my head will be lifted up above my enemies round about me. In his tent, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises to the Lord. Many, many scriptures wonderful scriptures about singing praises to the Lord. Jeremiah 20, 13, Therefore I will sing out in thanks to the Lord. Praise him, for he has delivered me, poor and needy, from my oppressors. Wow. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. So I'm going to read the poem once again, and then we're going to end with some worship music And that will do it for this broadcast of Behind the Rhyme. I will sing. Early one summer morning before the sun began to rise, 
The clouds opened up in heaven and rain poured down from the skies. Thunder smacked, cracked, and popped so loud it shook me awake. I opened my eyes just in time to see lightning strike across time and space. As I lay in my bed in the darkness, listening to this summer storm, I tried to forget that I was going through a storm of my own. In the distance, beyond all the thunder, in the midst of the storm and the rain, I heard a sound that made me smile. Birds were chirping their songs of praise. Though the rain beat down upon them, though lightning flashed across their skies, though the sound of thunder was deafening, it didn't stop me from hearing their cries. Sweet-sounding cries of birds singing, songs to their Savior and King, a lesson that even though it's raining in my life, my soul should continue to sing. For my Creator is still deserving to hear my songs of praise. It's the reason He created me. It's the reason He woke me up that day. I will sing. And that's uh, among the 120 poems and testimonies inspired by the Bible in the book in, in the book titled "It Is Written." My most recent collection of poetry published during the pandemic, in the midst of the pandemic, Christmas Day of 2020, it was released. And this broadcast is behind the rhyme where I'm sharing not only the poem, but the testimony and scriptures behind the rhyme. 